స్క్రీన్ కనిపిస్తుందా కనిపిస్తుంది about the next lesson next words for tomorrow okay, okay. then we will move to hmm. the uh, spoken telugu part i will read and tell you this one a la ala first one okay okay the next one ata ata but if you hindi is if you see hindi you may read like art but it is not art it is ata lata right. tala hmm. alata atala lata tala so these are the words lata. you can write hmm. if you learn these things so you already learn these things and you all you can read these words now let's move to the next uh, category after letters this is called na na ah uh, sa ga so na sa ga the difference between na and sa is you see this na is continuous and for the sa between talakattu and the actual letter there is little gap mm. then this mm-hmm. ga 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 looks like this okay. mm-hmm. it just a curve uh, half ca- half curve and talakattu this is called talakattu symbol okay so these three letters you can practice then tomorrow if you complete we will go to the next part okay then now let's move to the spoken telugu part but sir why they have uh, done mistake in hindi like lata it's not mistake it's the language is like that no let we uh, wrote lata la ta a ka danda but udhar nahi likha hua aisa okay mm. if you write this same lata in hindi do you <laughs> do you add any other character or symbol yeah yeah uh maybe oh 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 a sound yeah One. actually see um, maybe the because they want to equal equalize uh, the hindi letters to this one not with the dirgam sound uh, okay. maybe there is some reason for them to avoid but even if i write i write like this one i don't want to write that additional character when i pronounce it but uh, use that's why when i put something in english hindi also like uh, in hindi lessons i used to write english uh, letters only so it's easy to understand so we'll go to the next one okay let's see this one uh, in this lesson subject np of a verbless sentence is expanded as pronominal adjective plus noun uh, let us let us see the example sentence pronoun pronominal adjective is na this is like like possessive na na okay pronoun this is called na na is is called in english grammar pronominal adjective uh, noun is this one peru np so na peru rama narasimham so whenever you want to say your name you need to say like this na peru rama narasimham instead of rama narasimham you have to say your name my name is praveen my name is like you, you you your name you can say later na peru then say your name like so you can, they others can understand your name the next one is the following pronominal adjectives which are also called the oblique basis of the pronouns are introduced in this lesson okay let us see the example sentences 
సి ఐ నేను యు నువ్వు దిస్ ఇస్ నాన్ ఆనరిటివ్ సింగ్యులర్ లైక్ నో రెస్పెక్ట్ మీరు దిస్ ఇస్ ఆనరిటిక్ సింగ్యులర్ అండ్ ప్లూరల్ బోత్ ఆనరిటిక్ సింగ్యులర్ అండ్ ప్లూరల్ బోత్ ఓకే ఆయన ఆనరిపిక్ ఆనరిపిక్ సిగ్ ఆనరిపిక్ పర్సన్ పర్సనల్ ప్రొనౌన్ ఈయన ఆ ఓకే ఆర్ఈఎం మీన్స్ రిమోట్ మీన్స్ ఫార్ ఓకే ఈయన ప్రాక్స్ ప్రాక్స్ మీన్ ప్రాక్సిమిటీ నియర్ బై అండ్ ఆనరిపిక్ ఆనరిపిక్ సబ్జెక్ట్ అతను ఈస్ రిమోట్ ఆల్సో ఆనరిపిక్ but this ayana ayana are more polite itanu is proximate honorific also ame she remote honorific and equal equal means like it can be used in general this one ime she proximity so proximity means near if she is near we can use this one yevaru means who so here we are comparing the pronouns with pronominal adjectives for example if i say nenu if i want to convert this one to my your his how we change in in, in telugu that is a lesson so i nenu my na okay you nuvu your me okay me means your this is non singular and plural non singular and plural this is okay see this one honorific singular non not non spelling mistake hmm 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 honorific singular and plural okay not non h o n honorific okay, okay. Hmm. here non honorific see here instead of hon the type of non only so it is wrong mm-hmm. okay. so this mm-hmm. is non honorific singular ni this is honorific sing honorific singular and plural ayana his uh, see here ayana it is same ayana peru his name it is same mm-hmm. only and his name iyana peru it remains same as he he means ayana he is also ayana uh, here little difference is there he means here in this category atanu in pronominal adjective per, uh, area it becomes atani atani okay his pen atani pen his book atani pustakam again his itani book itani pustakam if it is if he is near then ame becomes ame only ame peru okay see here uh, her name is sita okay her name is sita ame peru sita this is here pronominal adjective her okay and when we want to use like pronoun it is same ame so ame is used in in, in two ways here uh, her meaning also ame she meaning also ame okay that you need to remember okay let's say let's take one example her name is sita she is working in bank see here ame peru sita here ame peru this is her name then in the sec- second sentence she is working means ame pani chestundi so in both places the word is same ame ame but the uh, the 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 english word is little different the meaning is little different first one is her second one is she meaning okay is it clear yeah the next one is whose see here evaru this is who evari means whose okay evaru vacharu who came whose whose book 
ఎవరి పుస్తకం దిస్ ఇస్ ద డిఫరెన్స్ ఎవరి పుస్తకం హూస్ బుక్ ఈస్ దిస్ ఇది ఎవరి పుస్తకం ఓకే ద నెక్స్ట్ వన్ ఈస్ యాక్చువల్లీ సి దిస్ బుక్ ఈస్ లైక్ లెర్న్ ఇంగ్లీష్ త్రూ తెలుగు లెర్న్ తెలుగు త్రూ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఓన్లీ only they just added hindi transliteration only there is no hindi <laughs> meaning okay hmm yeah so just for the convenience of uh, learners they put hindi text only all the grammar part they explain in english only okay uh, <laughs> okay the next point is an oblique base in telugu is used as a possessive or genitive form um it express okay we whatever we are learning if we learn with examples you will understand clearly first let me read then we'll use some example then you will understand uh, it expresses possession and adjectival relationship this is one of the functions of the oblique case in telugu see here um, let's read the next one also then we have the example sentences then you will understand clearly Uh, telugu predicate np of a verbless sentence is also expanded as a nominal adjective plus noun in this lesson uh, now we will focus on the example sentence so you will understand very clearly atanu tamila vidyarthi okay he is a mm. tamil student so here mm. ah see nominal adjective so here nominal adjective is tamila i will tell you how it became tamila okay tamilam is a noun tamilam is a noun okay because it's a language name okay but here vidyarthi vidyarthi is also noun okay but see this here tamilam tamilam when we use as adjective okay and when we use is along with the noun we don't need to add that am sound we change it to tamila okay when there is am sound okay but when there is no am sound it will be same let's take uh, see atanu tamila with atanu let's try okay i will type here then you will understand clearly one minute see here uh, he is a tamil okay so here atadu oka oka is optional tamila vidya arthi okay if we see the meanings individually he means atadu you know already tamil this is tamilam tamilam this is the meaning as noun okay then tamil tamila as adjective but uh, adjective when we use uh, here what they are telling this is like nominal adjective that means whenever we use along with the noun okay before the noun okay so tamilam tamilam becomes tamila vidyarthi so student means students means vidyarthi okay when i when i combine this one like this tamil student okay it becomes we don't say tamilam student we say tamila vidyarthi okay so what i mention here this am sound will be removed when we use as pronominal adjective okay what is it Prono- uh, nominal nominal adjective adjective okay i mentioned that one okay now let's take one more example telugu student okay so here there is no am sound mm. so no need to change so, so it will be 
తెలుగు విద్యార్థి దట్స్ ఆర్ ఓకే లెట్ సే హిందీ స్టూడెంట్ ఇట్ రిమైండ్ సే హిందీ వెన్ ఎవర్ దెర్ ఇస్ అమ్ సౌండ్ మలయాళం స్టూడెంట్ ఆ ఎస్ మలయాళం స్టూడెంట్ సో ఇట్ బికమ్స్ మలయాళ 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 విద్యార్థి మలయాళ విద్యార్థి ఓకే సో లైక్ దిస్ ఇట్ విల్ ఇట్ విల్ చేంజ్ వెన్ ఎవర్ దిస్ అమ్ సౌండ్ వి జస్ట్ స్కిప్ దట్ వన్ దెన్ వి make this change that you remember let's go back here that's the change we use uh, in this lesson the following pronouns are introduced nenu we already learned this one nuvu nuvu if person non honorific singular this also we learned already this is used to refer to people with whom the speaker has a close or intimate relationship so very like a family member okay Mm, blood relationship no need to show respect for example your sister is there okay just you can say nuvem chestunnavu because very close relationship okay but when uh, for example grandfather is there for grandfather also children tatayya nu em chestunnavu tatayya nu ekkadiki elthunnavu because it shows some kind of close relationship okay mm-hmm. but um in some families in some families they want to maintain that politeness uh, among mm-hmm. elders so in those families tata garu meer em chestunnaru like that they say but it is um, 50% 50% like this depending on the family type okay Mm-hmm. so that you can remember then even wife and husband just they speak nuvu nuvu only they don't give respect to each other <laughs> because they are very close also mm-hmm. yeah only when we are uh, even mother father amma nu em chestunnavu amma nu em chestunna mummy what are you doing so amma nu em chestunavu because very close relationship nana nu em chestunavu daddy what are you doing okay as i mentioned before some families maintain this kind of polite, politeness because they teach the children to right. speak politely amma garu em but i never heard but only i see in movies <laughs> but <laughs> in real life situations i i never saw that kind of politeness in children when they show to okay of course tata garu okay but tata is little distance so he is elder so tata garu okay but mummy daddy just nuvu ne nuvu only used okay the next one is meeru second person honorific singular and plural pronoun so this i already explained the difference when to use nuvu miru but when there are group of people necessary to use miru okay miru is the group of for the group of people only when you want to show respect use miru even for a singular single person like it is same like aap in hindi mm. tum or tu nuvu nuvu mm-hmm. like that okay the next one is atanu okay uh, he atan third person remote equal masculine singular pronoun so instead of telling all these things if you, if i say wa you will easily understand wa wa meaning here the mm. term equal stands for non honorific and non inferior see here what they are telling uh, it is not honorific or not inferior it may uh, like not uh, it can be used in any situations okay in general okay it will not show respect or it will not show politeness in equal normal okay uh, this is used to refer to people of equal status yeah equal status okay then it does not carry any respect 
non dis nor disrespect as i mentioned before it is just general word okay people mm, they don't think any bad if you say atadu it's okay but there is another word vadu vadu also means he but it shows disrespect okay like uh, only in informal commun communications we have to use that one the next one is itanu it is same but it is like ya ye ye aadmi itadu itar the next one is atanu again we i why they gave two times atanu atanu refers to remote person and itanu okay this is the difference they are telling atanu for far itanu for close, nearby uh, so far you have seen that uh, the person masculine singular pronouns show honorific ayana iyana atanu yeah this oh, we already discussed let's move to the next one um uh, feminine counterpart for both these pronouns is only ame so ame e me also equally used so there is no problem with uh, uh, disrespect or respect it's generally used ame okay then these are honorific as well as equal singular feminine pronouns so let us see example sentences ayana ravi garu he is mr ravi so see here garu is the honorific marker it is not the meaning of mr mr hmm. is just used in english just to, to give respect only but garu is honorific uh, marker used at the end of the name or profession the next one is atanu giri he is giri ame lata garu she is miss lata ame vijaya she is vijaya yeah these are the sentences let's go to the next one notice the concord between the subject np and the predicate np in a verbless sentence when the subject is nenu nenu or nuvu nuvu see here nenu ravi ni i am ravi so this one we discussed earlier whenever you want to say yourself for example you have to say nenu sumi ni mm -hmm. sumi then ni suffix you have to use i am sumi like that nuvu giri vi you are giri this is the meaning and giri is the name and vi is the suffix used for you singular only okay mm, again see even for a single person if you want to show respect uh, in such case in staff vi we use garu but it is uh, generally we don't have that we will not have that kind of uh, situations for example meer doctor garu i don't need to say meer doctor garu because you are a doctor it is uh, irrelevant like that okay but when there is a situation you can use garu to show respect when you are using you as a responsific or plural only is for singular we use v suffix here v okay the next one is nenu latani i am lata nuvu leelavi these are the variations this they interchanged only you are leela nuvu leelavi hope this is clear this is for introducing yourself or telling others their name itself okay the next one is this one notice the use of evaru in all three e three persons this is a human interrogative pronoun nenu evarini who i am who am i so here when when i am introducing i use ni suffix but when i am asking who am i also i use that same suffix who am i nenu evarini you can also say nenu evaru but this is the proper structure nenu evarini similarly who are you nuvu evarivi but it's okay to say nuvu evaru but nuvu evarivi is the proper structure nuvu evarivi then for the meeru we don't say meeru evarivi it is not correct it is only meeru evaru who are you this is this is plural or honorific ayana evaru for all these this all these things no suffix it is as it is 
ఆయన ఎవరు హూ ఈస్ హీ అతను ఎవరు హూ ఈస్ హీ ఈక్వల్ స్టేటస్ ఆమె ఎవరు హూ ఈస్ షీ ఓకే వా కౌన్ హే బట్ ఇన్ హిందీ ఫర్ ఆల్ దీస్ సేమ్ మీనింగ్ వహ కౌన్ హే ఎమ్ రైట్ యా వహ కౌన్ హే ఆయన ఎవరు బట్ హౌ డూ యూ డిఫరెన్షియేట్ i think it is difficult to differentiate by only by seeing the person only we can we have to or conversation only we have to understand he or she mm. Mm. but uh, otherwise the meaning is same wah kaun hai ayan evaru wah kaun hai atan evaru wah kaun hai aam evaru same okay the next one is mm, the imperative forms of the verb cheppu tell say or introduce in this lesson okay నీ పేరు చెప్పు టెల్ యువర్ నేమ్ సో దిస్ వన్ నాన్ ఆనరిఫిక్ సింగ్యులర్ ఓకే నాన్ ఆనరిఫిక్ సింగ్యులర్ వెన్ యూఆర్ టాకింగ్ అబౌట్ ఎ పర్సన్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ యూ డోంట్ వాంట్ టు షో రెస్పెక్ట్ యూ కెన్ జస్ట్ సే ఇన్ క్యాజువల్ కన్వర్జేషన్ యూ కెన్ సే నీ పేరు చెప్పు తుమ్హార నామ్ బోలో ఓకే తుమ్హార నామ్ బోలో టెల్ యువర్ నేమ్ సిమిలర్లీ the next one me peru cheppandi aapka naam boliye mm -hmm. okay so when you say aapka that shows respect so similarly telugu also me peru mm -hmm. so cheppu is bolo boliye cheppandi andi that is a anirvik marker as same as in telugu hindi okay mm -hmm. then okay andi is imperative plural honorific singular marker it is added to the verbal base to form an imperative honorific singular or plural, plural form yeah cheppu plus andi becomes cheppandi please tell here we have the explanation the next one is ye mandi hello ye maiya hey or the address terms used to draw the attention of the listener it doesn't have particular meaning as i mentioned before if you want to call someone mnd emaya for example there is a person is going if you want to uh, get uh, his attention emaya but if she is female you can say emamma emaya or emnd is used in informal conversation and it is like equals equal status it does not show respect or disrespect okay but ye mandi shows respect okay ye mandi mm. but this uh, ye mandi since it shows more respect usually in families wife calls husband ye mandi like that <laughs> ye mandi it's a usual way of speaking in the families but outside people also it is used emandi naaku bm kavali for example you went to shop hmm. is watching there somewhere there just to get attention emandi naaku bm kavali emandi naaku gajulu kavali gajulu means bangles bm means rice hmm. like that the next one is uh emandi and epicene honorific address term used both in masculine and feminine genders yeah it can be used with any person a uh, one more thing i want to tell you see this emaya here they did not mention but i will explain emaya ayya means like sir okay amma means like madam okay but when there when there is a single person you can say ye maiya single male person but there is female person you cannot say ye maiya because ayya indicates masculine gender so you have to say ye mamma ye mamma so there is a female uh, you want to get her attention ye mamma idi enta for example you went to a small shop ye mamma idi enta that means bo de do no no not not de do ye mamma means 
calling her getting to ha idi 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 yanta means ye kitna hai okay <laughs> yanta kitna hmm. how much price hmm. how much yeah that's one then so emandi ramarao garu this is one of the expression um, if you know the name you can just say emandi ramarao garu emandi sita garu but emandi used for any any gender but emamma and emayya or different used for different genders you know the meanings now okay the next one is emayya is non honorific address term used in masculine gender only see here as we discussed already this is non honorific address address it will not show respect but it's okay it's okay but emandi is more polite okay usually the elderly people like grandfathers to get attention from their gal grandchildren or any like son also just they say emaya itura like that they call itura means either ao they may not say with name then even the grandfather can say uh, with her grandchildren emamma sita ilara emamma means calling her attention here he will not say emandi because uh, she is children so uh, no need to give respect emamma sita itura come here like that. Mm. next we have okay this one we discussed andi andi is an uh, epicene epicene honorific address marker so this one used at the end of conversation or sentence most commonly vastara means do you come vastara andi iru vastara andi also um vastara means kya aap aate hai okay um andi is just used same say for the same meaning uh, it is added to a sentence when the speaker of the sentence wants to give respect to the listener okay the speaker for example if i want to give respect to you i can say for example vinipistunda mm, andi means can you hear me so I, what i vinipi okay kanipistunda at the at the beginning of the sentence what i said kanipistunda okay same sentence if i want to show respect to you i can say kanipistunda andi like that so at the end andi will be added to show respect then then the reply can be like this kanipistundi means it appears again if you want to show respect you can always add andi kanipistundandi kanipistundi plus andi you said you said avunu Hmm. for avunu also because it's a reply and it's almost end of the sentence for this also hmm. we can say andi avunandi kanipistunnandi avunandi kanipistundi but no need to use again andi at the sentence once you use avunandi for the next sentence it, you, you can skip avunandi kanipistundi yes it appears okay then uh notice the difference between garu and and i think once you asked this query at the beginning you or somebody you only okay okay uh, garu that was my first class ah okay that okay. was my first class uh, garu goes with a noun and andi goes with a sentence as a whole okay so as i mentioned for garu always we use with name or profession dr garu pravin garu sumi garu like that then andi goes with sentence complete meaningful sentence it's not necessary to have full sentence just for reply also avun andi sare andi sare means okay like that then 
garu attributes respect to the noun to which it is added andi attribute uh, andi attributes respect to the listener of the sentence yeah this you understand i think now okay let's move to the next one uh, we will discuss five more minutes then we will end the session okay then ravi ever andi who is ravi sir so here in english they used sir to show respect but we didn't translate the sentence telugu sentence as it is but we, we just to give same kind of approach we added andi who is ravi ravi evaru plus we added andi ravi evarandi okay similarly who is mr ravi who is mr ravi so here ravi garu evaru so you can also say this one ravi garu evarandi okay see the uh, second sentence ravi garu evaru this is who is mr ravi okay then the next one can be ravi garu evarandi this we can translate as who is mr ravi sir so here in english we have additional word sir it is not word to word translation but mm -hmm. since we are giving respect in english sentence in telugu also we add andi at the end in the previous sentence this is only who is mr ravi ravi garu evaru there is no respect to the listener only for the subject there is a respect ravi garu but the listener no respect but the third one both the subject and the listener got respect ravi garu evarandi like that okay mm -hmm. in the above three sentences sentence one attributes respect to the listener sentence two attributes respect to the person who is known as ravi and the sentence three attributes respect to both listener and ravi so this i explained already okay mm -hmm. the next one is notice the spelling system when a word or suffix beginning with a vowel is added to word ending with o sunna o o that is actually that is sunna it's look it looks like o but in telugu it is sunna but it sounds like am 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 namaskaram plus andi becomes namaskara mandi mam am plus andi becomes andi namaskara mandi see here namaskaram plus andi becomes namaskara mandi together it means namaskaram sir or madam idi kalam plus andi becomes idi kalamandi idi kalamandi then uh, from the above it can be equated as follows am plus vowel m plus vowel so yeah if you see this example you can easily understand in midst of understanding from this grammar part okay then in other words sunna plus vowel combination is written am plus vowel m plus vowel m plus this combination it is little difficult for the beginner to understand but very simple you combine by seeing the sounds only like am when there is am sound you just always you try wherever possible anyway it is not possible to combine the consonants together when there are vowel sounds then only it is possible to combine so it is very simple logic okay mm -hmm. kalam plus andi so here um it is a kind of um, oval sound kind of oval sound but ah this also oval sound you can combine here kalam andi like that with practice you will easily understand those conjugate that um what we call that combinations okay the next one is notice the following sandhi processes ru plus ni rni uh, this one if you are okay let's discuss here only so for example 
there is a word ending with ru, then uh, there is uh, other suffix ni. Ru plus ni becomes rni. Rni. You look at the transliteration. Ru plus ni becomes rni. Then doctor ru plus ni becomes doctor ni. Like this we conjugate. Similarly, engineer ru, engineer ru, engineer we write in Telugu engineer ru, like ru full sound, then ni, nenu engineer ni, then we write we can combine as nenu engineer ni, as it sounds faster. Okay, so we completed up to page number 37. So in tomorrow's class, we will continue from the next page that is page number 38. Okay, uh, if you have any doubts, you can just type there or you have any doubts or clear everything. Mm -hmm.